Welcome, friends. It's Pastor Brian, and I'm here in the sanctuary at Trinity. If you're watching this training video, it means that you are about to serve and worship as an acolyte. One of the most important responsibilities we have, not only in serving your church, but also in serving God. Your service is an act of worship to God. And our hope is that this informative and short video will help you feel more confident and more comfortable with the important role you're about to fulfill here in the church. We'll start with where you go when you show up for church on a Sunday morning that you're called to acolyte. On the Sunday morning you're scheduled to serve, plan to arrive 20 minutes before the service begins. For the 8.30 service, arrive by 8.10. For the 11 o'clock service, arrive before 10.40. Go to the sacristy. An acolyte parent will meet you there to assist you in preparing for the service. If the acolyte parent is not there when you arrive, begin selecting a robe that will fit you. Put on the robe. You will also put on an acolyte cross, which is found on a hook in the closet beside the robes. The senior acolyte will also put on a colored scapula, an outer robe, which matches the color of the season. You can check the color of the pyramids to make sure which is the proper color for that Sunday. The acolytes will retrieve a candle lighter found hanging beside the sink counter. An acolyte parent should check to see that the lighter has been filled with oil and the wick is visible. The acolyte parent will go over any instructions with you and answer any questions. The senior acolyte retrieves the processional cross, which is either in the chancel beside the altar or in a stand in the narthex. Proceed down the side aisle to the back of the sanctuary and wait there until the service begins. Take care not to block the aisles. At the end of the prelude, step into the center aisle with the cross bearer in front. The acolyte parent will light your candle lighter. The candle lighter should be carried on your right side with the flame up. The cross bearer should hold the cross high above your head. You will begin to proceed down the aisle when cued by the pastor or acolyte parents. Your pace should be slower than a normal walking pace. When you enter the chancel, the acolyte on the left will light the Christ Pascal candle on the six Sundays after Easter. It is lit on other Sundays when there is to be a baptism. The senior acolyte stops in the middle of the chancel and turns to face the congregation. The acolytes proceed to the altar table and light the candles there. If there are more than two, you begin on the inside candle out. When the candles are lit, step back, blow out your candle lighter, and move to your seat beside the lectern. Place your candle lighter in the stand beside your chair. The senior acolyte places the cross in the stand to the right of the altar and proceeds to his or her seat. Keep up with the service and participate by following your bulletin. The offering takes place after the offertory hymn. Pay attention to how many verses are being sung and on the second to last verse, retrieve the plates which are on the railing and move down to the chancel steps. Hand the plates to the ushers beginning with the outside. Remain in place until after the offertory prayer and then return to your seat. When the doxology begins, move to the lower level to receive the plates from the ushers from the outside in. Turn and proceed up the steps to hand the plates off to the pastors. Remain standing facing the altar table until the doxology is completed. Return to your seat unless there is a gospel processional on that Sunday. If there is a gospel processional, at the end of the doxology, the acolytes will retrieve the torches from their stands beside the altar table and then turn to face the congregation.
When the processional music begins, the senior acolyte, followed by the other acolytes, will lead the pastor down the center aisle. Do not rush. When the senior acolyte reaches the third rafter, he or she turns to face the altar, continuing to hold the cross. Those acolytes carrying the torches will turn to face each other. The pastor will stand between you. Remain standing quietly while the passage is read. At the end of the reading, the pastor will step to the side and the senior acolyte will lead the procession back to the altar. The torches and crosses are put back into place and the acolytes return to their seats. On the Sunday where there are baptisms or Holy Communion is to be celebrated, acolytes play an important role. When there is a baptism, one of the acolytes will take the short candle lighter and light the taper from the Christ candle. Move to light the baptism candle find beside the pulpit. Extinguish your taper and remain standing in place during the baptism. The senior acolyte should remove the cross from its stand and turn to face the congregation while standing behind the baptismal font. At the end of the baptism, blow out the baptismal candle and place it in the box on the stand. Hand the box and the baptismal certificate to the pastor to present to the family and then return to your seat. At the end of the baptism, the senior acolyte will lead the procession down the center aisle and then return to the chancel by the right center aisle. Replace the cross in its stand and return to your seat. On Communion Sundays, you will receive communion with the other servers by coming to stand around the table. When you've received communion, acolytes will take a full communion tray and stand on either side of the chancel steps. When one of the server's trays is empty, they will take a full tray from you and hand you the empty tray. You will take the empty tray to the senior acolyte who will hand you a full tray. Take the tray and return to your place on the stairs. The senior acolyte will stand behind the communion table with a full tray. When you receive an empty tray from one of the acolytes, stack it to the side on the main altar, take another full tray and stand behind the table, ready to exchange trays again. Continue until all are served. The first time I ever got to serve in a church was as an acolyte in this very sanctuary here at Trinity. I still have some of those very old bulletins with my name in them. Those are important to me not only because they remind me of what it was like to hear the church's call on my life and to understand that even I at a young age could play an important role in working for God's kingdom but also because it's a reminder that, that even you, as you prepare to serve as an acolyte, are gonna to get to play an important role in a worship service that might be life-changing for someone. Maybe you'll get to help with a baptism as we welcome a new life into the family of God, into the brotherhood and sisterhood of Christ. Maybe it will be your symbolic carrying of the light into worship 
that help someone experience the power of God's presence here in the sanctuary. Or maybe it will be the reminder as you lead us out of worship to someone in the pews that we are called to be the church, not just inside the sanctuary, but beyond these walls as well. I'm so grateful for your service, and more importantly, I'm excited about what God is going to do through you and in you as you serve here at Trinity.